All right, next we're gonna talk about how to create a data table using SQL code. So after the schema is created, just like with the UI, we're now able to populate our schema with tables and we can do that with SQL code here. When we create a new table with code, that typically involves selecting the schema, we'll execute a use statement, or we can also select it from the schemas tab. Then we'll give the new table a name, we'll specify which columns we want to include and which data formats and types there'll be. And we can also put on different constraints and different properties on the table. We can name a primary key, we can make some of the columns non-null, we can make some of the columns unique. So we can put on various constraints, we can put on foreign keys, and again, we'll talk about all that stuff in more depth later, just trying to give you an overview right now. So let's jump into Workbench and I'll walk you through writing the SQL code to create a new table. All right, so here I've pre-populated the query editor with two things. We have the use my first code schema. So I'm gonna run that and tell the editor that that's where I want to create my new table. And then I've got the shell of a create table statement and I'm calling it my first code table. So every create table statement will have create table, the name of the table, and then an open parentheses and a close parentheses. And I always put a semicolon after all of my queries. This allows you to have multiple queries in the same query editor window and then decide if you wanna run all of them or just run one of them. So I'd recommend always putting that there. And then the next thing that we're gonna to need to do is populate the shell with column names and we'll specify which data types we want. So I'm gonna call the ID column my first code table ID, and I'll call that a big integer. We'll get into all the data types in the next lecture, so uh, don't worry if you don't know what a big int is. And I'll say not null, comma. So we separate each of the column names that we put in here with a comma. So next, I'm gonna have my character field, and I'll make that a varchar. So varchar will take both text and numbers, and it can be any length up to what we specify here, which is 50 characters. Next, I'll have another one called my text field, and I'll call that text. So the my text field will only allow text values to be put into records in that column. And finally, we have a my created at, and we'll call this a timestamp. And finally, I'll just do uh, primary key, and we'll name the primary key as my first code table ID. And that should do it for us. So. Let's go ahead, we already ran the use statement and let's run this create statement. And if we look down in our action output, we see a successful execution. So if we go and look over at the my first code schema, uh, we may need to refresh. And sure enough, we did need to refresh. Um, now under tables, we have my first code table. We can see the columns here. We've got these four columns here, and we can also see it by running our select star from my first code table. So let's go ahead and run that query. Awesome. And most of you are probably familiar with this if, if you've written SQL queries before, but just so you know, the spacing doesn't matter here. So you can format this way. I'll typically write my select statements with a from on another line. And if we wanted to, instead of selecting all columns, which is what the star does for us, if we just wanted to select two of the columns, we could do my text field and my created at. And so now we'll run that. And 
in the result grid here, when we ran the select star, you see it returned all of the columns. None of them have any data in that because we haven't populated them with data yet, which we'll do later. But now when we run just this statement that names two of the columns specifically, you'll see that we just have those two columns come back. So in these selects, we can do a select star to see everything, or we can name specific columns and bring those columns back. And just like in the create statement, each of the columns needs to be followed by a comma if you're going to include another column afterwards. And then the final thing that you specify here should not have a comma. So you'll see in our create table, the primary key, there is no comma after we use that primary key clause. Same thing, the final my created at has no comma after it. A lot of people will get tripped up there. If you get errors, don't worry about it. But a lot of times it's going to be because of commas in the wrong place.